Hey everyone, how's it going? My name's Mayuko and welcome back to my channel where we talk about tech, career, and life. So I think that finding a good manager is one of the most important factors in deciding on a job. Because I strongly believe that a manager is there to help you be the best person that you can be for your work. They're there to coach you through challenging situations, provide new opportunities, and just generally be invested in your growth. And I feel I've been really lucky because my most recent manager, Jordana Kwok, embodies all of this. She's an engineering leader at Netflix, and recently I had her come on to Mugo's Corner, my show about leading a life that feels more you in both your life and tech career. I honestly think that she's like one of the best managers out there. Not only was she a role model for me in that she's also an Asian American woman, and not only did we share interests like iOS development and the whole women in tech movement, but she really enabled me to explore my career interests and try out different things. Our one-on-ones consisted of conversations about anything from deep discussions about tech culture to deep dives into app architecture to the best boba in the Bay Area to sometimes her just giving me space to cry about something that I was really frustrated about at work. I think that she's a manager who truly cares for her people, not just in their work, but as whole human beings. Being able to work with her was absolutely my favorite part about working at Netflix. And the lessons she taught me through her coaching and the work we did together are ones that'll bring with me into like everything that I do. So today I wanted to share parts of the conversation we had together. We talked about the work that we did together. You'll kind of get to see the dynamic that we had. She shares how she's been supporting her team through COVID, especially with their mental health. And we'll also talk about women in tech because it is Women's History Month after all. Hopefully by the end you'll have learned a thing or two or at least been able to see how important it is to have a really good manager by your side in your career. And also you'll just see like how amazing Jordana was and why she was like my favorite part about working in Netflix. This is probably going to be a long video so I'll leave everything broken up into chapters and I hope you enjoy. First, I always like to start with like a good origin story. So like maybe let's talk about like how we met because I think that's kind of a unique thing. I think there's lessons learned in that as well. But I, I believe I met you because you invited me to an event that was hosted at Netflix uh, for UI engineering. Is that right? Yeah, it was about the customer journey into the Netflix experience. And we had a whole panelist of women who worked from end to end uh, throughout that experience who shared their work. You know, there, there were a lot of women that we wanted to, you know, have on stage, kind of speak to this, the, the technical uh, complexities of all the problems that they were able to solve and to kind of really showcase uh, to other women that, hey, there, there's a place for us, you know, at the table, you know, in the product and in, you know, the services that we build. So yeah, I always like to think about that because I think it's, you know, in tech, it's really important to broaden your network and to connect with people and make relationships like that. Um, and so I think kind of this is one example in which I hold close to my heart going to events like that can turn into wonderful relationships such as these. And now we're here on my show, which is kind of a surreal thing to think about. Again, I wanted to highlight Women's History Month because this whole month is around celebrating women. I love this month. I get to hear about all the amazing women in STEM and other fields doing incredible work. I really wanted you to have to be on my show in March because you, Jordana, is slash has been one of my biggest role models for being a woman in tech. Unfortunately, like women in tech kind of as you get more senior in your career, I feel like are very few and far between. Like the fact that I was able to meet you and get to know you and work with you, I think has been really a true highlight uh, in my career. Yeah, definitely. I loved having you on the team, especially hearing about your experiences because that's, everyone comes with a different experience. Um, you know, how they got into tech or even, you know, how they got into just even coding to begin with, right? It, you might not even have a job right now, but you know, you might be dabbling in coding and you might come from a very different background. Like maybe, maybe you studied arts, right? And learning about everyone's different perspectives and how they got to where they are today and how they want to kind of move forward and kind of bring that passion to, you know, the workplace. That's something that, you know, I, I'm super passionate about. One of the things that I told you early on when we were talking about 
diversity, equity, and inclusion. Um, and this was a personal frustration of mine is that diversity is something that uh, is a really hard problem to crack. Everybody is trying to crack it at different parts of the pipeline, whether that be high school STEM education to college level computer science to whatever, or maybe even earlier, right? Like teaching toddlers how to code or something. But it's not something that like software engineers or ICs feel necessarily super, we, f we don't really feel like we can impact that that much. A lot of folks um, are empowered to do volunteering, which definitely helps. But at the end of the day, it's a really, really big problem. Um, and so when it comes to hiring on a team and finding folks from underrepresented backgrounds, yeah, it's a, it's just really hard. And I feel like sometimes you just like hit a wall where you're just like, there's just not that many women or minorities in tech. And also I kind of, I think diversity efforts tend to be spearheaded by people teams, HR teams, recruiting teams, leadership. But at the end of the day, it's like engineers, like individual contributors, ICs are a big part of this because we are the world in which uh, all these people come into um, and be a part of. I remember talking about like, what can we do? Like, what can ICs do? I think sometimes there is even like a, like a sentiment that like diversity and inclusion doesn't impact me because like I don't influence hiring or something like that. But in fact, it influences things so much. And so we kind of really tapped into the kind of inclusion part of stuff. I kind of want to hand it off to Jordana because she really helped lead a lot of this to happen too. But maybe do you want to talk about like what you think about all of that and then the talk about the IND series that we came up with? Yeah, it was awesome. I still distinctly remember that particular conversation we had where you're like, do you think we could do something about this? And I was like, oh, okay, maybe we could do something grassroots because a lot of companies, these efforts are like top down, very top down. Like, you know, someone yeah. maybe from HR says we need to do this. And then all the teams go ahead and, you know, maybe it's like implicit bias training, but mm -hmm. there's not a lot of uh, places where I've seen like a, a grassroots effort to really move the needle in terms of uh, diversity and inclusion. You know, with, like you said, you know, you can only do so much to invite people to the party, <laughs> meeting uh, the diversity side of things. But after you've invited them to the party, if they decide, hey, this doesn't feel great, I'm going to leave, then, you know, all of that effort's gone down the drain. So, you know, the one thing that we can have a lot of impact on, especially, you know, as team members from a grassroots perspective is you know, how do we how do we keep people at the, these workplaces um, and make them feel like they belong so that once they're in the door and they're invited to the party, they can they can be themselves. Right. And so we focused on, like you said, the inclusion part of things. And, you know, how do we then get team members to to create this inclusive environment? I loved your first kind of idea around that because it wasn't like jumping directly to these hard topics of how do we attract women? It's more around actually, how do we relate to one another and, and, and building that trust and uh, vulnerability. So I think the first workshop that you had pitched was around, you know, how did we get into tech? It's something that you would want to do regardless, I think, of whether or not you're you're tackling this issue directly. And we were just experimenting too, right? I think that it was a, an awesome collaboration because neither of us were, would know like, hey, how, how would people react to this or whether it would be successful? But the feedback that we got afterwards like everyone wanted more everyone was like oh my gosh I learned so much about you know my team members uh, when we connected like a week or two ago to kind of talk about um, like having you on the show actually um, I was pleased to hear that like you've you kind of they're still going on um, especially so because of the pandemic um, and how it's affected kind of mental health because mental health I think is another axis um, around diversity and inclusion and it's some it's a topic that's getting a lot more attention now because of the pandemic, but even before so. I guess I'm, I wanted to hear a little bit about kind of what you and the team have been doing to support each other through the pandemic in, in each other's mental health. Yeah, I mean, uh, kudos to, you know, all of the efforts that um, you kickstarted, like we continued this and continued a lot of the format. We, we did shrink it down to an hour from 90 minutes, just because virtually it's a little trickier to block off so much time. And we were trying to be really cognizant of people's time because some people are perhaps, you know, responsible for child childcare or elder care. So that those have been challenges that we've encountered so far because it's not really working remote. It's working, you know, working in a crisis while being remote, <laughs> which is very different. We're all just trying to like get by and it is certainly not what we would expect 
even if we were fully, you know, distributed where services like childcare, you know, schools are available. So we, we certainly kind of started to recognize that people were kind of at different points and experiencing different things. I in particular noticed that some people were trying to put all their time and effort into work because that's their outlet, right? They, they just had nothing else. They wanted to kind of keep their minds off of uh, what was going on outside. And then other people were barely kind of hanging on and, and struggling. But when, you know, engineers see other engineers be really productive, they're like, oh my gosh, I gotta, I gotta match my coworker. Otherwise I might be seen as, you know, not being productive in this environment. That's not really healthy <laughs> and something that as much as, you know, me as a manager saying, you can, you know, go at your own pace, take your own time, you know, take time off. I think there's this peer pressure that we all feel, right? That we need to show up and be, you know, put on this space that we're, we're still being productive. It, it was like, you know, difficult to crack without having everyone kind of come, come together and then actually share with one another what they're really going through. So we did another, like, it's almost like another vulnerability session where we had everyone just share what they're going through their personal lives. Like, are they okay? You know, some people might be living alone and they are feeling such a huge sense of isolation. That is very different than someone who might be like, hey, I have two kids who are now, you know, going through virtual learning and, and trying to keep them occupied during that time. And having people share those experiences and recognize that, okay, we're struggling in different ways. We're all struggling, but just in different ways. It's okay if we don't try to one up each other in terms of productivity and and that has led a lot of people then to kind of you know take care of themselves like in terms of like whether it's like physical health mental health and kind of uh, back off a little bit just knowing so that peer like relieving that peer pressure essentially i mean that was just 60 minutes and i you know i i think those types of things can really bring a team together and also open the discussion to more difficult topics around mental health and that that usually is stigmatized in many uh, work environments of like, we don't talk about anxiety or we don't talk about depression. I thought that was, you know, maybe another way to kind of bring to light that, hey, it's okay to talk about these issues. Yeah, definitely. I love that you've kind of helped open up the conversation. I mean, even thinking about mental health, I just remembered when I had a really particularly rough time with my mental health, you were there for me the whole time. And I, I remember telling you and I was like, I don't really feel like myself and I need some time off. And you were the most understanding. And so I think everyone's really lucky to have you as a manager, number one. Uh, and I love that, like, you know, it's an hour of a week, which some ICs are like, I don't want to spend an hour talking about my feelings, but it really can uh, have lasting effects, I think, between relationships um, it, within the workplace. And because engineering, tech in general, is just such a collaborative effort, uh, it's completely worth it to talk about that stuff. And it is uncomfortable, but um, it's something that everybody, I think, can ramp up to and hopefully good things come out of it. Thank you so much for watching the video. I hope you found it valuable. If you would like to watch the recording of the full show that I did with Jordana, then you can become a member today by clicking the join button down below and getting access to the live recording for as little as 99 cents. Also, I should note that you becoming a member helps support my channel. There's like no middle person, no ad or anything in between you and I. I really appreciate everybody who's already become a member and allows me to do what I do. Oh, and also the full audio recording will be available through the Mucos Corner podcast. I also wanted to take a moment to thank the sponsor of today's video, Brilliant. One of the things that I found about working at Netflix is that it's a company that really values people who are really good at learning how to think. And Brilliant is an incredible platform to help you do just that. Brilliant is a problem solving based website and app with a hands-on approach with over 60 interactive courses in math, science, and computer science. They all have an element of storytelling, code writing, interactive challenges, and problem solving as part of their courses. You can use Brilliant to get into the habit of learning new things every day. Like maybe you can set aside some Saturday mornings to learn something new, like how neural networks actually work or getting a better understanding of machine learning. So make sure to check out Brilliant today by going to brilliant.org slash hellomayuko, where the first 200 people will get 20% off the annual premium subscription. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to subscribe to this channel and I'll see you next time. Bye.